Okay, so today we're going to be doing just a few more examples with ideal gas and the ideal gas law, and then we're going to be finishing up the notes by talking about the um, the average kinetic energy of an ideal gas particle. Okay, so let's start with some uh, IB uh, examples. So this question, this is from a past IB uh, exam, and you can tell from the formatting. The question says an ideal gas, okay, so I'm going to underline that, that's important let me erase that blip an, an ideal gas is contained in a thermally or a thermally insulated container a cylinder um, that basically means that the heat in the cylinder can't go to the outside uh, by a freely moving piston okay so this top right here this is a freely moving piston and it's obviously free to move that means it's not fixed in place it says the gas is compressed by the piston and as a result the temperature of the gas increases what is the explanation for the temperature rise now this is one of those questions where you have to be very very careful to answer the question being asked okay so based off of everything we've talked about up until this point see if you can pause it here and answer this question okay so what, are, what is the explanation for the temperature rise? Now, the problem with the answer choices here is that some of them are true, but they don't answer the question being asked. For example, um, the gas is compressed by the piston. That means the pressure is going to increase. That means the rate of collision between the molecules is going to increase. A is not the correct answer. Okay, It is a true statement that is going to happen, but does not answer the question, which is why is the temperature rising? Okay. Pressure has to do with the rate of collisions between um, gas particles. Okay, temperature does not. Okay, so A, even though it's a true statement, does not answer the question being asked. Think about what does temperature have to do with? Remember, this has to do with the average kinetic energy of the gas particles. Either, you know, atoms or molecules, whatever. Gas particles. Okay, which means our answer, if it has to do with temperature, needs to say something about the energy of the gas particles. Now take a look at B. Energy is transferred to the molecules by the moving piston. Does that have to do with energy? Yes. Okay, B is actually going to be the correct answer. Now you might ask, how can energy be transferred to the molecules by the moving piston? Well, just think of it like um, when you play baseball and you, you move the, the bat towards the ball, when they collide, energy transfers from the bat to the ball. Or if you think of like hitting a, a tennis ball, it's the same thing. The um, when the tennis racket makes contact with the tennis ball, energy is transferred in that collision, and then when the tennis ball moves away, it has gained energy. Okay, B is going to be the correct answer because it answers the question being asked. C is a true statement. Okay, it is true that the molecules of the gas are going to be pushed closer together because the overall volume of the gas is going to uh, decrease. That does not answer the question. D, uh, the rate of collision between the molecules and the walls of the cylinder increase. Um, that is also a true statement, but it does not answer the question. And actually, this is the one that has to do with pressure. If you go back and look at your notes, um, the pressure inside a container of, a, of an ideal gas has to do with the frequency of collision between the gas particles and the container walls, not actually the rate of collision between the particles themselves. So this one, A... Um, does not have to do with pressure. Um, it is true, but it doesn't have to do with pressure. D would be true if you replace the word temperature with pressure, um, but the only one that answers the question being asked is B. Okay, so pause it here if you need to. Okay, now let's go to the next question. Um, it says the equation of state for an ideal gas, PV equals nRT, describes the behavior of real gases, and then we Basically, I have a multiple choice question where we are asked about under what conditions does this ideal gas equation work. Okay, so pause it here and see if you can answer this question. Okay, so remember that the key distinction between real gases and ideal gases is that in a real gas, um, you cannot ignore the um, the electrical interactions between the gas particles. Now, when that happens is when the gas particles are really close uh, together. So typically you see um, real gases stop behaving as ideal gases at, um, at higher pre pressures, lower volumes, and moderate temperatures. Okay, So um, 
we want to know under what situation can we treat a real gas as an ideal gas. Um, B is out. Okay, not only at high temperatures uh, can you approximate a real gas as an ideal gas. Um, C is out. The large volumes part is fine, but we don't want large pressures, right? Because large pressures mean that the gas particles are colliding with the container walls often, and that means that if there's a high rate of collisions, that, that means they're probably uh, spending a lot of time close together, which we don't want. We want the gas particles basically to be as spread out as possible, because if they get too close together, then they start affecting each other. Okay, so C is also out. Um, D is obviously not true, and so that leaves A. Okay, uh, low pressures, uh, which corresponds to uh, large volumes, of course. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at one more question. An ideal gas is kept in a container fixed volume at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius at a pressure of 6 ATM is not the SI unit for pressure. I'm kind of confused as to why this is in an IB question. Um, ATM, again, is atmosphere. It is a unit of pressure, but it's not the SI unit of pressure. So I'm not quite sure why we're dealing with that here, but that's fine. So the initial temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. I'm going to call this T1. This is the original pressure. I'm going to call that P1. The gas is heated at a constant volume. That is important. Okay. It's also true um, that because it's sealed in, in a container, the amount of gas is also not changing. And it's heated to a temperature of 330 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to call this T2. Now the first thing I'm going to re recognize is that, hey, wait, these temperatures are in Celsius. right? And so I'm going to have to convert them to Kelvin because any equation that has temperature must be in Kelvin. Change in temperature can be in either one, but temperature by itself has to be in Kelvin. Okay, so T1 is going to be 30 plus 273, and that's going to be 303 Kelvin. And then T2, I'm just going to do that here, is going to be 330 plus 273, and that's going to be 5, uh, actually that's going to be 603. Help. Okay. Now, do keep in mind this is a multiple choice question, and on the IB exam you cannot use a calculator on multiple choice questions, uh, but that's fine um, because the question is just saying about. And so we want the new pressure P2. So I'm going to think of the ideal gas law, and then we did problems like this in the last video where I have some quantities that are fixed. Now in this case, the quantities that are fixed are the volume, because it tells us the volume is fixed, and N, the number of moles of gas, is also fixed. Now, you might say, how do you know that N is a fixed number? Well, if it's sealed in a container and you're not adding or removing any gas, then it obviously has to be a fixed value. And so that means that V over N is a constant, and if you solve for V over N, then I guess V over N, that would be R T over P, and this has to be true for any T and any P. Now, of course, R is just the gas constant, and that doesn't really matter too much, but if the left side is constant, that means the right side also has to be constant, and so it has to be true for any value of T and P that we choose. Okay, so that means we can set it up like R T1 over P1, equals R T2 over P2, because again, this ratio has to be the same no matter what the temperature and pressure are. R is the same on both sides, and so we basically have this ratio that has to be satisfied. Now, if we want to know the, the new pressure, we want to find P2. P2, if you just rearrange this, would be equal to, let's see, P1 T2 divided by T1, that's just basic algebra. Um, P1 was 6 atmosphere. And then the ratio of T2 to T1, if you're just looking, um, if you don't do the conversion, you might think it's 330 over 30, but it's not, because remember we had to convert these temperatures to Kelvin. And so that ratio is actually more like 603 to 303. Now, 
603 divided by 303 is very, very close to 2. And so P2 is going to be very, very close to 6 times 2, which is 12. And again, you could argue, well, if you plug that into the calculator, it's not exactly going to be 12. But that's fine, because that's the best you can do without a calculator. Remember, on these multiple choice questions, you cannot use a calculator on the IB exam. Um, that's why the question says the new pressure of the gas is about. Okay, the only one close to 12 is uh, C. Okay, so the, the answer to the question is C. Okay, so pause it there if you need to. Okay. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about in this unit is the average kinetic energy of an ideal gas particle. And we're going to just kind of go through uh, the slides and the notes. I'm not going to prove any of this to you. There is an equation uh, that you need to be able to use, and you need to know what it represents, but you don't need to understand where it comes from. Um, if you want more details, you can read about it in your IB physics textbook. Okay, so here's what it says in the notes. It says, since ideal gases have no intermolecular forces, their internal energy is stored completely as kinetic energy. We've talked about that before. The individual molecules making up an ideal gas all travel at different speeds. That's why we talk about the average kinetic energy, because if you have like a whole mole of an ideal gas, some particles might be moving very slow, some might be moving very fast. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of those particles. Okay. Okay, but you do need to understand that some of them, uh, that they don't all have the same energy, of course. Um, without proof, the average kinetic energy of each ideal gas molecule has the following forms. Notice, by the way, that on this slide in the notes, they have EK okay, with a line over it. Anytime you ever see something with a line over it, that represents an average value. So EK is kinetic energy. EK with a line over it is average kinetic energy. Okay, now here's what the equation looks like. Okay, so EK, actually let me erase this. Okay, so EK with a line over it, and again this is the average kinetic energy of each ideal gas molecule. Okay, so for a single ideal gas particle is equal to 3 over 2 times KB. KB is a constant known as the um, Boltzmann constant. The value for the Boltzmann constant is down here. It is about 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23 joules per Kelvin. Okay, you can look at the unit right there, joules per Kelvin. That value of the constant you don't need to memorize or anything, but do note it's a very, very small number. So the average kinetic energy, EK, with a line over it, is equal to 3 over 2 times KB times T where T is the temperature of the ideal gas in Kelvin. Now, in other words, what I'm telling you is that for an ideal gas, the only property that affects the average kinetic energy of the ideal gas particles is the temperature. Because Kb and 3 over 2, those are both constants. The only variable would be T, the temperature of the ideal gas in Kelvin. Um, in the notes, it's also written in this different form, 3RT over 2 and A. Um, it all works out to be the same. R is a gas constant. NA is Avogadro's number. Remember, that's the 6.02 times 10 to the 23 value. Either way, it's a constant. Uh, the only difference is they, they've basically simplified this constant divided by this constant into the Boltzmann constant, the 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23 joules per Kelvin. And again, this only um, this is stated without proof. You don't need to know where this equation comes from, uh, but you do need to know how to apply it. That means, given the temperature of an ideal gas, you should be able to find the average kinetic energy of one single ideal gas particle. Okay, just based off of the temperature in Kelvin. So, let's uh, do some examples with that, and then we'll be done with the note. So, I'm going to erase this.
Okay, it says example 2.5 moles of hydrogen gas is contained in a fixed volume of 1.25 cubic meters at a temperature of 175 degrees Celsius. By the way, it says um, hydrogen gas, the type of gas does not really matter. Um, that's one of the cool things about an ideal gas. First, it says what is the average kinetic energy of each atom? Now, all we have to do to do this is use the equation. Again, um, the there's a ton of gas particles in an ideal gas, typically speaking, especially in 2.5 moles. Some of them have a very high energy. Um, in fact, um, a lot of them ha probably have a high energy. Some of them probably have a very low energy. This is only having to do with the average kinetic energy of each atom. Okay, so this would be 3 over 2 times Kb times T. And this is a very easy calculation for you to do. All you need to do is make sure that you recognize that the temperature must be in Kelvin. Okay, so they give us the temperature in Celsius. We do have to convert that to Kelvin. Again, any equation with T in it must be in Kelvin. If you see an equation with delta T in it, that can be in Celsius or Kelvin. Okay, so this is a very easy calculation. We're just going to plug this into our calculator. 3 over 2, that's the same as 1.5 times the Boltzmann constant. Remember that 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23 is the Boltzmann constant. And the value I get is 9.27 times 10 to the negative 21 joules. Okay, that is the average kinetic energy of each atom in the container. Okay, so all we needed to calculate that was the temperature. Okay, so pause it there if you need to. Okay, keep that value in mind. 9.27 times 10 to the negative 21. And the next question says, what is the total internal energy of the gas? So first I'm just going to write that down. 9.27 times 10 to the negative 21 joules. Um, remember that internal energy, by definition, is the total kinetic energy plus the total internal potential energy of all of the atoms or molecules making up an object. Now, in the case of an ideal gas, there is no internal potential energy. There's only internal kinetic energy. And so the total internal energy is the same as the total um, kinetic energy, actually, I mean, right, EK, for kinetic energy, total kinetic energy of all of the gas particles. Now you might say, well, didn't we just find that in the last problem? No, because remember, that was only the average kinetic energy for a single gas particle. So to answer this question about the total internal energy, we need to take this value that we just found and multiply by how many gas particles we have. Okay, so, well, how do we know how many gas particles we have? I will show you. I'm just going to erase what's down here. So I have lots of room. Okay, so to find out that uh, is very, very easy. Remember, we've talked about the mole as just being a, a counting value, a quantity value. One mole of anything has a value equal to Avogadro's uh, number. And so 2.5 moles, doesn't matter what they're moles of. Um, in, in this case, 2.5 moles of hydrogen has a quantity equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 hydrogen um, atoms. Okay, just based off of the fact that that's what a mole represents. One mole of anything, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of that something. Okay, and so we can very easily do this calculation, figure out how many atoms there are, and then multiply by uh, the average kinetic energy of a single particle. Okay, so I'm just going to do this calculation really quickly. Just type that into your calculator. 2.5 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That gives me 1.51. I'm rounding up times 10 to the 24 
hydrogen atoms. And if I know that the average kinetic energy of a single hydrogen atom is this value up here to get the total kinetic energy, um, which is equal in this case to the total internal energy because there is no internal potential energy, all I have to do is multiply uh, 1.51 times 10 to the 24 times 9.27 times 10 to the negative 21. And so I'm going to put that into my calculator, 1.51 times 10 to the 24 times 9.27 times 10 to the negative 21. And I'm just going to round to two sig figs. It's somewhere about 14,000 joules. Okay, it's like 13,900 something. It's about 14,000 joules. Okay, so that is the total internal energy of the gas. So again, these calculations are not hard to do um, as long as you know what everything in the equation represents and you understand the definition of what internal energy is, especially for an ideal gas. This is one of those reasons why definitions are important. Um, if you can do that, then these calculations are not difficult at all. And so I think we're just going to look at one or two more uh, problems. Pause it here if you need to. Okay. Um, and then it says, what is the pressure of the gas at this temperature? That actually has nothing to do with the previous uh, calculations. That's just using the ideal gas law. Um, I'm not going to uh, do this again because I think we've done enough problems with the ideal gas law. But you can see what the answer is when I click through. There you go. Okay, so um, let's see if I want to do one more example. Um, okay, it says a container holding an ideal gas under pressure of 250 kilopascals is measured to have a temperature of 300 degrees Celsius and a volume of 2 cubic meters. Calculate the number of moles of gas in the container. Okay, so I'm actually going to um, go out here so I have more space to work with. And I'm just going to really quickly do this example. Um, what I would recommend is that you actually uh, might want to pause it here and then you can check your work after I go through these examples. Okay, so this is going to be uh, example two. So I'm going to start with example 2a. Again, here is that example. You can pause it here uh, if you want and then I will have the answer uh, for you to check yourself uh, materially. Okay, so here is my uh, my work and my answer for example two for the first question, the number of moles, the ideal gas. I got 105 moles of ideal gas. Uh, remember that the ideal gas constant that we're using is 8.31. Um, don't forget to convert your temperature in Celsius to Kelvin. And keep in mind that this is kilopascals, which is why I replaced that K, which is kilo, with 10 to the power 3. So you should have gotten 105 moles of ideal gas. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the next question where it asks us to find the average kinetic energy of each ideal gas particle and calculate the internal energy of the ideal gas. Um, so I'm not going to go through step by step again just because I don't want this video to be too long. Um, but you can see my work here. If you pause it here, um, I'll have my work up in just a second. Okay, so um, again, pause it here. Um, we got the answer uh, for the first question. It's 105 moles uh, of ideal gas. I've got my answers for these two questions here. Uh, so pause it here and enter in your answers, and then uh, we'll see in just a second how close you are. Okay, so the answers for 2B and 2C, here they are. Um, I did put some of the work. On the top, you can see the answer for the second question, and the answer for the third question is at the bottom right. Um, don't forget to convert the temperature to Celsius, of course. Um, remember that one mole of anything has, is equal to an amount. Mole has nothing to do with atoms or molecules. It's just a quantity value. So one mole of anything is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, or that's something. If I had a, 105 dozen atoms, then I would be multiplying 105 by 12, okay? But I don't have a dozen, I have a mole. 
Okay, so mole is a quantity number. Don't forget about that. Um, so hopefully you got those answers correct. You should now um, have your notes complete for this unit. This is topic three, thermal physics. We'll have one more worksheet for you to work on, um, doing problems with ideal gas law and uh, using this equation that we just learned in this video. And then we will be moving on to the next video. Okay, so please let me know if you have any questions. Um, we'll see you in the next video.